Hi, everybody. My name is Nick Justrician. I teach virtual production at Drexel University. And for a little over 15 years now, I've been using primarily Motion Builder here as my tool for editing motion capture data. I just recently completed a second fellowship with the folks at Epic Games. And in that, I ended up learning that just about everything that I've been doing in Motion Builder is now possible within Unreal Engine. So I thought I'd start a new series specifically on using Unreal Engine for editing motion capture data. We'll go over quite a few different things, but since this is the first video, let's do something basic. We'll take a set of individual mocap takes and we'll string them together so that we get one smooth animation. So uh, let's start with, well, going into our obligatory set of uh, Mixamo data and we'll get ourselves a character and a few animations and then uh, string them together in Unreal Engine. So of course, I'll go ahead and uh, log into our Mixamo library. Of course, you can do this with a free Adobe account. Once you've created your account and logged in, you can go ahead and browse all of the assets that are available inside this library. Now I'm going to go to characters and I have uh, Sophie here chosen. And I actually chose Sophie in particular because there is a little bit of a glitch when she's brought into Unreal Engine in that uh, her hair bun actually doesn't look all that great. <laughs> it actually doesn't look all that great here in Mixamo either. But uh, we can do an improvement in the material in Unreal, so that looks a little bit better, and uh, and then we'll be able to go from there. So we'll get a couple things covered in this tutorial. So I've got Sophie selected, and I'll click Download here, and we're going to just take the FBX binary and T-Pose. Once she's finished downloading with the model and uh, skeleton, we can go ahead and move on to animations. I'm going to do three different animations and string them together into one long one. I'm going to start with having her stand up from a sitting pose. So I'll type in stand. And uh, we'll just take this one right here. And we can just take a look here. And she does her little stand up. Wonderful. So we'll go ahead and click download. And uh, we'll again use FBX binary. But we do not want the skin. So we'll go ahead and choose without skin. We'll keep the 30 frames a second. And ignore keyframe reduction. And go ahead and download. Once this download is finished, we'll go for another animation. And this time, we're going to have her look ahead a little bit. So I'll type in the word look and uh, hit enter. We'll search and look at those. And I think, yeah, here we go. There's one here where the hand goes up to the head and looking ahead. So we will go ahead and take that one and so download. And keeping our settings, download. And then once this is finished, we'll just have one more to do. And that is going to be a walking animation. Let's make sure we're typing in the right place. And there we go. And so um, let's pick something that's kind of confident. Let's go with this one. OK, she's walking ahead confidently. So we'll go ahead and download that without skin, 30 frames a second, and we're all set. Now with this finished, we've actually downloaded a total of four different files. I've got the character with the mesh and the skeleton in this first file, and then our three animations, looking, standing, and walking. So with that, we're ready to go ahead and move over to uh, Unreal Engine. Let's take a look here, and I've got Unreal Engine running. This is a brand new project with nothing more than a single empty level. So we can go ahead and uh, start bringing in our FBX files. I'll create a folder down here in my content browser to store all these files. If uh, you don't have the content browser open, you can use the content drawer. That'll open, and then it'll go away when you uh, click away from it. Or you can do like I do, and that's uh, go to the Window menu, Content Browser, and select Content Browser 1, and that'll keep this docked here for you. I'm going to go ahead and right-click and choose a new folder and call that Mixamo. With that, I'll go ahead inside by double-clicking, and we'll start by importing the first file that we uh, downloaded from Mixamo, and that's the Character Mesh and Skeleton. So I'll right-click, Import the Game into Mixamo. And then we should be able to browse through our files. And uh, here's our character file right here. And we'll go ahead and open. Then we're presented with a dialog box with some options. Uh, yes, we want the skeletal mesh that found in the file. Yes, we want to import the mesh. We're not going to assign this to any other skeleton. We wanted to use the skeleton in the file. And uh, we don't have any animation to worry about. We can leave that checked. And we'll convert scene just to make sure that uh, Sophie is standing up vertically instead of laying down with a, uh, a wrong axis alignment. 
So with imp I used import all, but only one file was selected. So either import or import all would have done the same thing. And once this is finished, we'll see a large number of assets here. We get a couple warnings, but they're not going to impact us uh, in any bad way. So we'll just go ahead and close that window and take a look at all the different assets. So here we have a number of textures. There is a couple of materials. There's the skeletal mesh, that's our uh, character. And then um, a physical asset for collisions, the skeleton, and uh, there's an animation sequence here for the T-pose. Okay, well, we won't really need that. All of these have an asterisk here in the lower left-hand corner, and that indicates that the uh, data actually has not been saved to disk yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Save All. And this will list all the files that need to be saved, and we'll click Save Selected. All right. So with that done, uh, let's take a look at that hair issue I'd mentioned earlier. So I'm going to take the skeletal mesh, drag that up into the level, and uh, drop that in. And with uh, Sophie model selected, I'll tap F for fit, for frame. And you can see that the uh, hair bun is very, very transparent here. And what's uh, causing that is just an error in how the material got set up during the import. And um, we'll take a look at that right now. So we've got two materials, one for the body and one for the hair. Of course, it's the hair material we're interested in, so I'll double click to open that. And here is our material definition. I'll expand this a little bit and uh, let's separate these textures so we can see how they're configured. And uh, sure enough, here's our problem. Well, there is your problem right there. RGB is going into opacity for this material. And as a result, uh, the darker colors of the, in the RGB are resulting in uh, more transparency than we'd like. We need to connect the alpha channel to opacity to get a better result. So I'll click on the alpha channel pin and drag that to the opacity. And one more thing, as I rotate around this sphere, we can't really see a whole lot of uh, hair strands. And uh, we can improve this by selecting the material node itself and then going down here in the lower left and checking on two-sided. When we uh, get our new render from that, now we can see hair on the outside and the inside of our mesh. So when we see through the outside, we'll be able to see hair on the opposite side, uh, on the inside of the mesh. So with those two changes done, we'll go ahead and save. And with that saved, we can close. And sure enough, there is a much better look for uh, Sophie's hair bun there. So uh, great. Now we're ready to uh, go ahead and import the animations and, and put them to work for us. So um, by the way, just a quick review of uh, navigation here in the viewport. If I use Alt and my left mouse button, I get to uh, orbit around what I hit F for, right? So I fit and uh, frame up Sophie. Alt, left mouse button rotates around Sophie. Alt and right mouse button moves us out and back. So we're zooming in and out. And uh, Alt and middle mouse button is kind of uh, sliding up and down, left and right. Um, I can also use the right mouse button with no key on it just to pan the camera around in place. All right. So let's go ahead and import our animations. So I'm going to click over here. I, last time I used the right click and import. Well, there's another way of doing that. We can hit the import button here. And when our dialog opens up, I'm just going to go ahead and select all three animations and choose open. And with the uh, file options here, we don't have any skeletal meshes discovered. Uh, it is going to a skeleton uh, that's already in place, and that's exactly what we want to do. We need these animations to apply to the skeleton that Sophie already has. And uh, we'll import animation time. By default, it's usually exported time. So just to be safe, I do animated time, and that should bring in the full animations in each one of these files. Again, convert scene is selected. And if I click import, I'll have to click that button once for each of the three files. So instead, I'm going to click import all and that'll import all three of the files at once with the same set of options. And I should get uh, three new tiles down here in the uh, content browser. Now, by the way, if uh, you're not happy with the size of the tiles and uh, icons here in the uh, content browser, you can always go to the settings option right here in the uh, content browser window and choose thumbnail size and adjust the size as you see fit. Okay. So we've got our three animations in here, and uh, we just need to save them. Uh, since I used an alternative import option here, instead of save all over here, I'm going to go to the lower right-hand corner here of Unreal Engine. We have four unsaved files, on, and we can click this button. 
And there's our four files, save selected. Okay, so everything's all saved. Now we need to uh, use these animations in Sequencer so we can blend them together. So uh, in order to use Sequencer, of course we need a Sequencer asset, a level sequence. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the uh, movie clapper here. And in that pop-up menu, I'll choose add level sequence. That'll give us uh, options as to where we want to save it. And I'm going to go ahead and save it in the Mixamo folder. And I'll just give this name uh, demo seq and underscore zero one for good measure. And click save. So that gives us a new asset here. And it gives us a sequencer window to work with. I'm going to drag the tab for the uh, sequence window and just dock it right here next to the content browser. I very rarely would ever need both the browser and the sequencer at the same time. So it's uh, pretty convenient to keep the sequencer down here and work with the timeline at the bottom of the frame and uh, easily be able to move back and forth between sequencer and content browser. Okay, so now we're ready to add an animation track for Sophie here in sequencer. So we'll select her in the viewport. Now she's highlighted in yellow. She's selected in the outliner also. I can go ahead and click plus track. And since Sophie's selected, when I go to actor to sequencer, she's right here at the top. So we'll say okay for that or we'll select that. And now we can start placing animations. So my uh, timeline scrub head here, I'm just gonna click on to front on that button right there. That brings us to frame zero. And we're gonna add an animation. So click plus animation. We're gonna start with her standing up. So we'll click on this and she's sitting on the ground and then she goes ahead and stands up. Now an issue we run into here is that this animation is only 150 frames long. 30 frames a second, that's only five seconds, and this animation is longer than that. So let's extend the duration of our sequence. We'll just go ahead and click on our current frame number. I'm gonna type in 600, so we jump out to uh, 20 seconds out, and go ahead and set this as the end of our playback range. So now we've got plenty of room, not only for the standing up, but for some other animations as well. All right, so we've got her standing up, that's great. I'm gonna add another animation, and I wanna make sure my playhead is out past the end of standing up. I'll click plus animation, and this time we're gonna have her look around a little bit, so I'm gonna click on looking, and now there is our uh, looking animation. Now I can slide this left and right in the timeline, and that'll reposition it in terms of playback, and I can even slide it right up against the standing up animation. But we run into an issue here, and that is that the uh, animation pops. So the beginning point of looking is at a slightly different location than the ending point of the uh, standing up. And one other thing that we want to note is that, uh, you know, the, the pose here, she's got her both feet down here in the uh, standing up pose and uh, both feet are down, but in slightly different positions here in looking. But I think we're going to be okay. At the end of standing up, you can see she shuffles her right foot a little bit. So let's line looking up based on the left foot, which doesn't move. And uh, that'll reduce, hopefully, the, reduce the amount of uh, popping that we end up getting. So let's go ahead and right click. We're gonna match this bone in the previous clip. So what is this bone? Well, there's no matching turned on. We're gonna scroll all the way down and look for left foot. Now left foot is actually the ankle left toe base is the ball of the foot, the base of the toe. So we're going to choose left toe base because that's closer to the floor. And we'll see that the looking animation has moved a bit. And now as we move back and forth between these, the left foot stays put. So that's going to be good. Now the rest of the body still pops. So we want to blend this a little bit. And to do that blending, we're just going to slide the looking animation to the left over top of standing a little bit. So I'm just going to drag that to the left. And if I uh, zoom in here by uh, grabbing the ends of my scroll bar and zooming in, what we can see is that there's a bit of a blend going on here. We're easing out of standing up and easing into looking. So let's see how this looks. And we have a much better result. There's a little bit of shuffling in that left foot. Uh, that's less than ideal, but uh, we'll accept that for now. The, the reason this is happening is that the motion of this foot is based on the root uh, you know, right here in the middle of her hips. So if I uh, wanted to really diagnose this, I could right click on standing up and show skeleton and right click on looking and show its skeleton. Okay, so looking is the green skeleton and purple is the standing up skeleton. And we see here that the, the root bone 
is in a different place for the two animations, even though the foot is in the same place. So during this blend, the foot is kind of moving a little bit relative to the uh, motion of those two uh, root bones. So, you know, the only other thing I could potentially do here is see if there's any point that uh, the root and the foot are, are relatively similar. I can extend this a little bit. Um, this is no better than before. So let's just keep this like this. And uh, the one other thing I could try is maybe adjusting the nature of this crossfade. We're easing out of one and easing into the other. So what I could do is right click in the crossfade and choose options. Let's try linear and see if that works any better for us. So with linear selected, now these lines are straight and actually we get a little bit of improvement there. I'm going to go ahead and accept that for now. In later tutorials, we'll talk about ways that we can uh, correct this by using control rig after we've done our uh, core blending. But for now, this will do. And uh, we just want to add a little bit more animation to our character here. And that would be for her to uh, walk off. So I'm just going to extend our timeline so we can see more. We'll go to the end of looking and we'll go ahead and add another animation. This time it's walking. And in walking, it starts with the right foot down and the left foot up. Let's find a place right here where we're kind of passing through our motion here. I'm just going to look at the point where her left foot comes down and the right foot is just passing it right now. Let's see where we are at at the beginning. Yeah, I feel like at the beginning of this clip, her left foot's already in front. So we really want the, the right foot passing by the left. So let's go ahead and take this moment here, we'll kind of drag the beginning to that. And this is going to be our starting point. And this will be like she's picking up her right foot to step forward. And we'll go ahead to the beginning here. Uh, again, since her left foot is down uh, at the beginning of this, we're just going to go ahead and match with the previous clip. And we're going to match with the left toe base. And let's see how that looks. All right, this is pretty good. And let's just do a little bit of blend. And very nice. Okay, so we've got a pretty good uh, takeoff here. Great. So let's go ahead and add some more walking. What's nice is the Mixamo clip is designed to loop, so we can add that same walking clip to the end. I'll right click, and uh, this time I'm going to match the right foot since the right toe base is down at the beginning. So we'll go ahead and match and scroll down and choose right toe base. And put that here right at the end of our walking clip. Very good. It's a nice smooth clip. And since this information about matching, it's actually stored in this clip, what I can do is I uh, select that clip, control C copy, go to the end and control V paste. All right, we ended up with another track. I can just drag that up and snap it to the end. And there we go. So now she uh, goes ahead and she's looking and then takes off and walk. So let's hit space bar to play. All right, so that takeoff is a little much. Let's uh, drag these away for a little bit and see if we can extend that takeoff a little bit. Go right here. Smooth that out. Really, oh, really nice. There we go. Let's see if that works real time. Yeah, she's still, let's just bring this all the way across. Now that's not a little too much sliding. Let's go ahead and try linear. One more time. A little better. And let's put in the rest of the walking. All right, so there we go. So there is a really basic way of taking existing animations, several of them, and, uh, stringing them together with crossfades so that we blend in between each one. And uh, there she goes looking. And when she's done looking, she'll go ahead and walk. And finally, we can get rid of those skeletons just by right clicking and deactivating the show skeleton on these two clips. And we're good to go. Don't forget to save all. And of course, that's where this alternative button for saving really comes in handy because our content browser is not visible, but we can click over here 
and save all of our changes. Hope this helps. Till next time, have fun.